This is Stephanie with Snow Dome of the Day, the Advent Edition, number 24. You know what that means. It's Christmas Eve. And I've come to realize that the last 24 days aren't just a devotion. The documentation of the changing weather in Omaha, Nebraska. Well, it's very cold today. <laughs> But we're celebrating it's Christmas Eve. Today, I have a figural snow dome I've been saving for this very day. It's a juxtaposition of two things that happen on December 24th. Santa Claus on what we call a pedestal base. And in his belly, the nativity scene. It's pretty perfect, don't you think? <laughs> I mean, it'd be hard to squeeze Santa into a belly of a nativity, right? So it kind of had to be this way. Just so we remember, Santa Claus has not eaten the nativity. In the world of snow domes, that which you honor goes into the globe part <laughs> of the figural. So it's not so much Santa's belly as the honorable position of the snow dome. We are honoring the Holy Family uh, with this snowy scene. <laughs> I, I guess I you know Christmas Eve is is I think it's a pretty fun day it can be fraught with some tension and stress um, because of the activities that go around it um, today might be the day that somebody figures out they don't quite have all the ingredients for a special dish today's the day that in other years um, a family member might realize that somebody has what we would call the stomach flu and can't attend an event um, today's the day that, uh, again, it, more pro so probably in other years, people realize that someone's given them a gift and they want to reciprocate and they need to rush out and find something. I'm hoping that this year uh, we have a little bit less of that kind of stress, although I'm, I'm very sorry that it comes at the cost of adding the stress of people letting go of some of their family and personal traditions and rituals for a year. So um, for that reason, I give thanks for what's inside of this snow dome, um, a story of faith. And all the things that some of us may be missing this year are the things that surround but are not the story of Christmas. The story of Christmas is one that proceeds forward no matter the weather, no matter um, what the conditions are culturally for celebrations. Um, here in Omaha, 11 years ago, uh, we refer to that as the year that Christmas Eve was canceled. Of course, Christmas Eve itself wasn't canceled. Many of us canceled our worship services because of the extreme amount of snow that was falling. And I, I think that's a good reminder to us that when we say things are canceled, if it's a theological notion, if it is a Christian tradition, that itself is not canceled. We're just doing it in a different way. So this year, um, we've already posted our edited Christmas Eve Eve service, during which I drink a cup of hot chocolate. I've never done that before in a Christmas Eve service. And tonight we will live stream at seven o'clock and Unlike other years, that service will be attended by people in other states. And tomorrow noon, our African refugees will stream their service for Christmas Day in Chirundi and Kiswahili. And that service, unlike other years, will be attended by people in another continent. I'm anticipating they'll have people in attendance from at least 10 states and three other nations. I'm not glad that we're in a pandemic. I am glad that we figured out how to keep telling the story, um, not so much of Santa Claus, but of the Christ child's birth and what that means for us. The notion that God is with us in the flesh, in person, that our humanity matters. And in the midst of that humanity, we too can be messengers of good news. The angels, um, the angelic messengers, went first but after that shepherds innkeepers women and men um, told that story and they told it long enough and well enough that we know that story as well and um, this year i'm giving thanks for that christmas story 
that brings us together across time zones, um, across different conditions of living. It brings us together in the midst of different family traditions that may or may not be happening the same way. And that story gives us permission um, to be human and to forgive one another, to enjoy one another, to do things a different way. Because what remains the same is God's love. The invitation to accept that love and to share that love as best we are able, no matter what's going on around us. That's the best story. It's the best day. And I give thanks. Amen.